So my name is Nicholas Ashford. I'm in the School of Public Health. I'm the Alberta Innovates Translational Chair in Infectious Disease Control. There's still a problem in society. Uh, we still have sewage being released, uh, either intentionally or unintentionally, from our sewer networks that gets into our recreational water bodies, that gets then into our source waters for drinking water. So when we start looking at that as a bigger picture, there are all sorts of ways that we can deal with this problem uh, and the multiple facets that it involves. So for example, when we're talking about uh, reducing sewer overflows uh, from stormwater intrusion when the snow melts or when we have a rain event, for example, uh, we can think about it in a different way, that if we have a sewer that is actually sealed, vacuum or pressure, uh, we don't have that ingress and exfiltration or water coming out of the sewer into the environment. And why would we want to do that? Well, we may want to capture the embedded energy in the food and feces that flows in our sewer. And when we start thinking about, well, how would we do that more optimally, it actually makes a lot of sense in many situations, not necessarily all, uh, to keep the black water. So that's the toilet water and the food grinder, food residuals from our kitchen sinks. Keep that in a separate pipe. We will call that black water. And we can then harness the energy from that and turn it into methane using a biological digester. Uh, and the residual of that digestate can then, we can precipitate out the nutrients. And so now we don't have a eutrophication problem, which is part of our wastewater disposal issue. We can reclaim those nutrients. And from a bigger picture point of view, society needs to learn to recycle phosphorus because that's a fossil resource. When we think about where does that come from? It comes from guano, bird feces deposits that we mine. So it's a fossil resource that global agriculture relies on. So we need to close that loop of uh, phosphorus because otherwise it ultimately gets washed away um, through our river systems into the oceans and not to be harvestable for another few million years. So you know, we're not going to be around that long uh, before we run out of phosphorus. In fact, we think perhaps 120 years time from now, global agriculture will come to a screeching halt unless we've learned to find other ways of recycling that phosphorus because we're going to run out of readily mineable rock phosphate deposits. So the research has that unfolding and that was just dealing with the black water. But the bulk of the water in a sewer is actually grey water. Uh, and the grey water makes up 75% you know, or so of the water flowing in the sewer. Um, so why do we put it in the sewer in the first place? We can treat that now we've got it separate in the house, but we can recover the thermal energy in that, put that back to heating the homes, treat that water at the household or small community level, and put it back in for toilet flushing, clothes washing, garden irrigation purposes during the summer. So we don't need, we can actually cut down by at least 50, maybe more percent of our potable water demand. And if we think about potable water, it's bottled energy. There's a lot of energy that's gone into producing that so we can reduce our energy footprint. And when we look at that whole picture that I've just outlined very briefly, um, where we've got separate black water from gray water, we treat them separately at different locations to recover energy in the form of methane, nutrients in the form of struvite, and water from the gray water treatment train, uh, we actually halve our energy footprint. Uh, we halve our life cycle cost in the whole service of providing those water sanitation services to communities. So it's economic, uh, reduces the impact on the environment, and by the way, it's healthier for us. So you know, why would we not do this?